quite, um, quite, quite precise down to the uh, very last detail, uh, or exactly on the nose. Yeah. So that Um, uh, yeah, so for that, new it varies over all complex. If, if you just want to talk about rational or real or whatever, then you just learn to restrict that case, that's right. Just a question to show my interest. I wouldn't know for the OSK guidance, there are searches in the standard or in the usable? Um, either. Either? Either. So the, 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 the lowest K cut, excuse me, the, the irreducible quotient is the constituent of the standard module that contains the lowest k-types. Okay, uh, and just to be super precise, um, in order to really write down this projection on the nose, as we've been talking about, you have to pick an x naught, and and then what you get is a, a, a bijection between this set and the irreducible g k x naught module. That's really what you're being demanded. Okay. <clears throat> so this is just a very brief digression, um, just because it's a convenient place to say it, um, and it comes up in some of the later talks. Uh, the so I did, this is what I just this is just what I just said. The standard final non-zero parameters uh, parameterizes uh, the irreducible and visible representations of G, and it's really a beautiful fact that uh, if you simply um, take these parameters and if you take the standard, oops, excuse me, if you take the collection of parameters x lambda zero, where nu is zero, if you take this collection of standard final non-zero parameters, that parameterizes k hat, the irreducible representations of k. Yes, so, so that's absolutely right. So what, the, what you, you take this parameter and you make a representation of G out of it. That's a tempered representation. And these conditions guarantee that, uh, that this representation of G has a unique lowest k-type. And the map from this parameter to the unique lowest k-type of this representation is this bijection. If they are what? Um, yes. The, the, that for, for these these guys, the equivalence of these types of parameters is easy. Uh, was that the question? I think so. Now I don't understand the question. If I give you. Just you have to understand what happens when you change x, right? Right. But that, yeah. it, I don't. I mean, it's not. I think it's, it's not hard anyway. Yeah, I think I mean, that's it's just, the right answer. <laughs> it's not yeah. especially easier. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I wouldn't. Well. I wouldn't say that taking the lowest k-type and checking whether the lowest k-type is equal is a particularly good test either. Um, anyway, this is, this is. <clears throat> so um, well. On Monday, when David talks more about emission forms, you'll see that 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 the restriction of these representations to k is playing an important role, and um, this is the connect. This this will this is an important fact. But that's all I'm going to say about k. I want to go on and talk about the Kajdan Mystic Bogan integer. So, uh, fix an infinitesimal character, gamma. And all, a lot of the time, you can just take rho to be the infinitesimal character of the trivial representation. In a lot of ways, that's the most interesting one, where there's the most complex structure, the, the, the most uh, complicated kind of representations. Um, we're going to work entirely in the growth and group. And um, I'm not going to try and define that precisely, but it's basically just um, you have uh, modules which are not necessarily irreducible, but they have finite composition series, and uh, you 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 ignore the uh, you pretend that everything's semi-simple. The only thing that matters is the composition factors. It doesn't matter what order they're in, subs or quotients or whatever. Um, you just 
you just look, uh, you, you say two modules are equivalent if they have the same kind of irreducible composition factors. So that's the growth in the group. And so basically, the, the way I think of the way that one, one way to think of the growth in the group is it's a Z module, and it's the, whoops, it's the formal Z span of the set of irreducible representations with this infinitesimal character, just the formal Z module. And this is a finite set. So it's a finite dimensional. Uh, Z module. And so by definition, an element of this uh, space is a formal sum uh, uh, of irreducible representations with infinitesimal character, with that infinitesimal character, and integer coefficients, not necessarily positive, just arbitrary integer coefficients, sometimes called the virtual module. Um, so in particular, uh, if you take a standard module, it's possibly reducible. So it, it has, it can be written in the growth of the group as a sum of irreducibles. And again, not, it's not literally a direct sum, but it, it, has, it has a collection of composition factors, and the AIs are their multiplicities. And um, yeah, so this equality is what I mean, is in the growth of the group. And I, I should have said that these, these AIs are greater than or equal to zero. These are actual multiplicities. Um, it's a beautiful fact that the standard modules also form a basis of the growth of the group. Uh, and with, if you choose the or if you choose the order correctly, the, the matrix, the change of basis matrices between these two bases are upper triangular. Okay. So uh, the the idea here is I'm going to go back to category O. When you study category O, the, in some sense, the basic objects are the verma, full verma modules, which are large, but constructed in an elementary way, just by some tensor operation. And the standard modules that we're talking about here are analogous to verma modules in category O. And just like a verma module has an elementary uh, weight, uh, fill, uh, weight um, Weight space decomposition. Uh, in the these these uh, standard modules, um, it's it's they have nice formulas. They're, they're easy to uh, it's easy to compute the restrictions to k. You can write out their k k multiplicities. So so these standard modules are large, but more but in some sense elementary objects. On the other hand, the irreducible modules, they're like the irreducible highest weight modules in category O. In some sense, that's what you really care about. And uh, so in, in category O, you might be asking for what are the weights of an irreducible finite dimensional representation, for example. Um, the analogous thing in our category is take an irreducible representation and compute its restriction to K. That is a hard problem. And in general, there aren't, there are not good techniques for solving it. it well, just the one that the, the one I'm about to sketch is the only one that I know that's general. And so the idea is, um, uh, so this is just some terminology. You write a, a standard module as a sum of irreducibles. That's called the composition series of I. And the inverse relationship, where you write an irreducible as a linear combination of uh, standards, is called the character formula of J. And I, I mentioned here, these Zs are non-negative, but these Bi's are to be any integers. And this is called the character formula because, uh, it, it just, well, I mentioned K types, but also the global character. Oh, I think I said something. Yeah, the, the, it's, you, there, there are formulas for the distribution character of these standard modules, and therefore, if you have a formula like this, you get a formula for the character of J. That's why this is called the character formula. And also, K-types. Uh, this gives you a formula, if you know these K-types, gives you a, a way to calculate the K-types of an irreducible representation. <coughs> uh, oh yeah, that's, that's what I say here, that, that um, uh, this, this is how you compute a restriction of an irreducible to K like this. And what David is um, sort of halfway through explaining 
is that, uh, and this is a very big statement, but just to give you a little bit of an idea, is um, you, you want to compute, we want to compute Hermitian forms on irreducible representations. That's, that's what this is all about. <laughs> and the idea is that, in keeping with this sort of philosophy, that uh, computing the Hermitian form on a standard module should be easier. And so if you can do that, then there should be some formula which relates the formula on irreducible in terms of the, um, the, the forms on the standard module. And that's exactly what's true. Um, and I'd say that in the 1980s, people started looking for something like this. And it was very elusive. Um, and only in the last couple of years, well, last year, last six months, <laughs> did we pin it down. There, there are a lot of really, really hard problems in making this precise. And they, I'm sure David will be talking about some of these issues. Uh, they're, they're, um, they're actually formal, um, these are, we call them split integers. Um, they're, in, they're, they're, form, they're of the form A plus B S, where S squared is equal to 1, and A and B are contained in Z. Um, S is sort of carrying around the negative, the fact that forms can be negative. Anyway, so we'll find out more about that on one day. Other questions? So, as always, the only way to understand this is to look at SL2. So, let's do the SL2 example. So, um, in the list of the three, uh, of the uh, four representations um, uh, of SL2, the, one of them is X0, 1, and 0. That's the whole Morgan discrete series. And X sub 1, 1, 0 is the anti-homomorphic discrete series. And it should be clear that Atlas would always close the parenthesis. <laughs> uh, and if you take X211, that's the spherical principle series, that infinitesimal character rho. That's the reducible principle series that breaks into the two discrete series plus the trivial representation. And there's this one other non-spherical principle series where you change the one to the two. About these. So these are the four representations at infinitesimal character rho, and here are the two matrices that I was talking about. The, the discrete series are each irreducible, so i is equal to j. This standard module has three irreducible constituents, the, um, the trivial representation plus the two discrete series, and this other induced representation is irreducible. So, Jeff, I, I think it's worth staring at this slide for a few minutes okay. uh, to make sense of it. Maybe you could draw a picture of the I of P2 formula on the blackboard to, to give people a chance to stare at it properly. Uh, I'm happy to draw a picture. I'm not sure what picture you have in mind. But... Uh, I mean, well, for example, showing the, the K types of the spherical principle series and how they ah. get divvied up. Sure. Excuse me. So um, I P zero is the holomorphic discrete series, and um, if you look restricted to K. These are its k types. It has lowest k type 2, and then k types going to the right. And the infinitesimal character here is 1, which is rho. Uh, the opposite guy, i of p1, is the anti holomorphic discrete series. And its k types are minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, and going on infinitely far in that direction. And finally, I of p2 
is the spherical principle series. And that has all the even k types in it. <laughs> Terrible design. Um, 0, 2, 4, 6, minus 2, minus 4, <coughs> minus 6. All of these are the k types of spherical principle series. Okay? And then finally, there's I of P3. Or is that what I called it? Yeah, P3. Um, this is the non spherical principle series. Um, that has odd k types. One, three, uh, sorry. One, three, five, and minus one, minus three, minus five. Okay? So this one's totally different. There's, there's sort of no relationship. These are all, these are spherical and this one's not. And so I'm going to draw a line here. This guy's irreducible and it's just itself. That's not very interesting. But what's interesting is up here, so the spherical principle series, so one of the ways you think about reducibility is just in terms of k-types. Now in general that's not quite enough, but often it's enough to completely determine the reducibility of something. And zero two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so uh, uh, um, the uh, uh, what do I want to say? Oh yeah, so so this this so so this guy is, is reducible. And so how does it reduce? Well, it has this discrete series in it. So I draw that like this. And it also has the opposite discrete series in it. And it has the trivial representation. And that's what says that in the growth of D group, I of P2 is J of P0 plus J of P1 plus uh, J of P2. This is trivial discrete series and discrete series. Is that what you have in mind? Yeah. Okay. Um, so all I care about is the growth of the group. Um, depending on whether new, well, the way we the way we chose things, yes, the trivial is the quotient. And that's what that's what uh, these brackets mean. These are subs. And when you quotient out by them, you get the trivial. Um, now, as long as I've drawn that picture on the board, I'll just mention one thing, which is that uh, this picture is the picture of I. Uh, the, these k types are the, are the k types of I um, x sub two. Uh, one new for any new. The k types don't depend on new. Okay, and what happens is that at special points like new is equal to one here, the representation becomes reducible. But then, as you vary new, uh, generically it's irreducible, and the whole ball game is to is to deform new and um, watch what happens as as this thing becomes reducible. And so I'll just mention one example. If you take this thing i x sub two uh, zero uh, one, this is this is irreducible. And if you take the limit. You, you deform it, you get a family of representations i x sub 2 0 t. And for t less than or equal to 1, greater than or equal to 0, it's still irreducible. Greater than 0. Strictly greater than 0. Yeah, sorry, that's what I wrote. Um, it's, it's irreducible. And at 0, it becomes 
the, um, uh, the limit of discrete series uh, uh, plus the right sum, the limit of discrete series minus exactly this non-final guy I was talking about. So um, this is the this is the picture of this representation. It's irreducible at nu equal to one, but if you went to nu is equal to zero, it would break into two pieces like this. <clears throat> but there's no room for a finite dimensional in the middle, so you just get two pieces. And so what I've spent the last 10 years doing is fiddling around with deformations like this and trying to figure out what happens. <laughs> All right? Okay. Um, what time did I set? Quarter of? Uh, I think so. Peter? Yeah. Okay. So, um, oh yeah, so so here's the irreducible as some of stand, uh, sorry, excuse me, the standard in terms of sums of irreducibles. It's obvious how to invert this matrix. <coughs> you can write the trivial as the principal series minus the two discrete series in the growth of the group. Okay? So we get these, these uh, two four by four matrices. Um, they're inverses of each other. One of them, this is the this is the matrix which is giving you multiplicities of irreducibles and standards, and this is the one which is giving you multiplicity of standards and character formulas for irreducibles. Okay. And as is evident in this picture, the, the there are four representations of infinitesimal character row, but they break up into two blocks, and this matrix is block diagonal. And the, the, the representations which are grouped together in these matrices are called a block. Oh, that's what I said here. The, the, the M lambda, lambda is the direct sum of blocks. And each block has these two bases and these matrices which go back and forth. And the Pajamos and Bogan polynomials uh, compute these matrices. Question? What's question? Oh yeah, I'm writing them as columns. Thank you. Uh, that's you have Mark to blame for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you you infected my thinking. <clears throat> okay, so I want to do some a couple of examples. Um, take the trivial representation of any group. Uh, Greg Zuckerman, my advisor, computed the character formula for these fellows. Uh, in Alice terms. It's the following, just to avoid having to write plus rho everywhere, I'm going to assume that rho is an x over star. So here's the theorem. Um, suppose you have a parameter with infinitesimal character rho. Associated to it is a character chi sub p of, uh, of a real Cartan subgroup. And here you really can think in atlas, the atlas world. You don't have to conjugate or anything. Just literally work on that diagonal Cartan. You get a character of the diagonal of a real form of the diagonal Cartan. With, and it's, it's uh, the real form is given by this theta x. And uh, the statement, so you, you can ask, uh, so, so for any representation with infinitesimal character rho, you can ask, does that occur in the character formula of the trivial representation, and if so, what's the multiplicity? And Greg tells you that this, rep, this character occurs if and only if, uh, or sorry, this p occurs, that's a misprint. i of p occurs in the character formula for the trivial, if and only if this character is the restriction of an algebraic character of, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> restriction to h of r of an algebraic character of h of c. So it should say i of p occurs. Maybe a different color. I of P occurs in the character formula of C if and only if this character chi sub P is the restriction of a holomorphic character of H of C. <clears throat> so you have this real torus and it has some disconnectedness. It, it, it's not necessarily connected. And the, 
tricky thing is always you, 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 you basically know the differential is rho, um, but you have to decide these z2s, how are these little elements of order 2 act. And you might think that the sort of basic cases where they're all trivial, but that's not quite right. And it's actually quite a nice statement that the, the sort of basic case is when uh, these, um, these are restrictions of holomorphic character. So for example, um, if you take R cross, the character um, chi of x is equal to x, or chi of x is equal to sine of x, oh, sorry, absolute value of x, sine of x, absolute value of x. Those are the two characters with infinitesimal character 1, so to speak. And um, it's this one that's the restriction of the character chi of z is equal to z. So you might think that somehow the one without the sign term is the, is the natural one, but in fact, it's this one. Okay? <clears throat> and uh, finally, uh, the character formula for the trivial is you take all of these P's satisfying this condition, and the, there's a sine of plus or minus one, a sine of minus one to the length of the parameter. There's some notion of length, but then, anyway, the coefficients are all plus or minus one. Questions? Absolutely. Sorry, could you repeat? Uh, the question was, the theorem says you can write the trivial representation as a linear combination of standard modules. That's exactly right. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, given what I said earlier, you know there is such a formula, and this is telling you what it is. So this, in fact, is computing some Kajanomistic polynomials. This, this fact existed long before Kajanomistic polynomials existed. This is late 70s. Uh, the, this theorem is, as you say, it's more or less from Drake's uh, thesis, which, which means about 72. <coughs> Um, okay, so um, in, I'm not going to say anything more about the demodule picture, but uh, in, in the demodule picture, representations are parameterized by a k orbit and a local system on the k orbit. And these representations that I'm talking about are precisely the ones where the local system is trivial. Uh, in Atlas terms, um, this is the formula. You run over all KGB elements. And for each KGB element, you take this row, row guy that I mentioned earlier. And there's a length on X. Um, uh, oh, am I, miss, am I missing a constant? Is this off, off by a constant, maybe? I'm not sure. This um, might, there might be a constant. Yes, it is. The order of the bob of W well, much the, the length of the trivial parameter. Yeah. OK, so, yeah, so there's, 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 there's off by a constant. Um, but uh, it's quite nice. This, it, it singles out this family of parameters, the one where lambda and, and, and rho, excuse me, lambda and nu are both equal to rho, and those are the ones which give the trivial local system. And the, the way I, I think about this business um, is that uh, if, you're, if you're given a, if you're given a um, well, let me just go on to the next slide, I'll say it. But let me pause their questions. Yeah. Uh, minus one to the dimension of the orbit. I mean, this number, the length is the dimension of the orbit. So this is minus one to the dimension of the orbit. X is a KGB element, so it's a K orbit. OK, so here's an example. This is the um, trivial, um, this is the trivial of this before. So, um, so somebody asked me yesterday, uh, I, I forget that some of these things aren't obvious. So SP4 is a group, and trivial of SP4 means the trivial representation of that group. So that's a parameter. And then print block says, uh, construct the block of this guy, and then it's just an output routine. Prints it for you in, in, a nice, in a nice way. Okay, And if you look through here, you see that um, uh, 
the x's occur 0, 1, uh, oh, they all occur exactly once except there are two x's right down here. And if you look at the lambdas, the lambdas are all rho. Rho is 2, 1, except for this one. And uh, what that tells you is that the character, and, and this number 10 is the, is the trivial parameter. What that tells you is that the trivial representation is the uh, alternate, you know, the linear combination of numbers 0 through 10 with some signs. Is it? I mean, I think it, it would be pretty if it's easy for you to switch windows and, and do a character formula of trivial. Uh, that's something that's slide. Oh, great, great, great. <laughs> um, and uh, one thing I want to point out is that um, I said something about row, row over here, uh, previous slide. Oh, there it is. Um, row, row. So I'm, I'm, the lambdas are all row, but what about the news? This lamb, this new is row, but these other ones aren't. In particular, these are zero, but there's an equivalence. And all of these parameters, you could plug in new is equal to rho, and you get an equivalent parameter. So for example, up here, if you plugged in, if you replace this parameter with one where new is equal to 2, 1, it would simply replace it with zero because it's equivalent. <coughs> so um, all of the, you can think of all of these news as being rho. Exactly. That's precisely what these are. Yep. So what Mark said is that what these points are is nu projected to the minus one eigenspace of theta. So rho minus theta rho over two. Yeah. These are these are precisely one minus theta x over two. Yes. So when we did the SL two example, we saw that at infinitesimal character rho. There are kind of two separate blocks. Yes. Uh, does this print block print out the full infinitesimal character? Ah, that's an excellent question, and the answer is no. This is just a block of the trivial representation, and um, there are, for example, um, right here, you see that there are uh, two principal series because both the roots are real, and um, it, if you think about it, the the since this is a group of a split group of rank two. It has four principal series with infinitesimal character row, so there are two that are missing. Now, one of those principal series is irreducible, and so that's in a block by itself. And then there's another one, and so um, what, what's true is that um, at, at row, um, there's this block with uh, 12 elements. There's uh, another uh, B, B1, B2, and B3. B3 has one element, and I believe there's one other block that with five elements in it. And the way I remember that is because I'm pretty sure there are 18 representations at infinitesimal character row. And we could look at those, but uh, um, anyway, I'm just looking at one block here. All right. And so here's the character formula that David requested. Um, print character formula of the trivial of G. 